United made the most of their second chance in the European Cup against Stuttgart, the team they say has more foreign reserves than the Bank of England. Leeds won 2-1 in Barcelona in front of a tiny crowd. Their hero was Karl Schutt. He scored the winner less than a minute after coming on as a substitute, and tomorrow's his birthday. Good evening. Evening. Evening, all right. Hello. Uh, we're bring, coming live from the North Pole. If you're watching it live, you'll understand what we're on about. All sat here with massive coats See, on. People Woolly say every, like, I've had my coat on for at least last two months. We're coming here and aircon's been on. Yeah, um, I came in and there were a polar bear sighting seat messing about with desk because it's freezing in here. <laughs> it's fucking cold. So, uh, so yeah, so we're all uh, wrapped up as though um, we're about to make an expedition to the North Pole. But anyway, we're here for episode 37. Uh, we've got a lot to get into this week, despite there only being one game this week, uh, the QPR game, uh, because we've been... Um, how, can I, how can I word it? Uh... Nah, fuck it. Been slandered by uh, <laughs> by some other dude, so we'll get into that quite in depth a bit later on. Uh, but I think best place to start uh, over at Ellen Road at the weekend, uh, a game against Queens Park Rangers. Um, I'll be honest, I was at work, I missed a large amount of it. Uh, I managed to catch the highlights and about the last 20 minutes of the game. Should have caught the first 20 minutes. That was yeah. quite good. Go on then, enlighten me. Well, should have been 3 0 up at least. Yeah, at, at uh, least. I've got my notes here. Roof should have had 10. Yeah. He, he, mm. he likes scoring against QPR. Yeah. Um, for definite, but from what I've seen from the highlights, he, he missed some decent chances. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say uh, missing them sort of sounds bad. We were just, I think you were just a bit unlucky. Yeah, yeah. missed them and probably could have scored them, but more unlucky than than how else. Yeah, so they're not sitters now. They're just decent chances. Though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, overall, though, how did the game go? Did you know? Did we get our just just desserts? What we deserved, or were it a smash and grab type job? I think. It was weird, really, because we absolutely battered them for 20, 25 minutes. But then after that, it was like, they're going to score at you. Because you just had that feeling. I, don't, I had that feeling. I don't know about anyone else. And, but I never felt that we would lose the game. Right. It was just it were weird after that. I mean, it were a bit of a scrappy game for a bit. And then second half, we come out firing again. And... Pretty much put it away. It seems to be very much us in the last few games, right? Mm. You know, quiet first games, uh, first half. Sorry for for our standards, and then come out second half and and really start going at teams. Do you think that's some form of a uh, a ploy? Keep it solid for twenty thirty minutes, and then look to be more expansive. After I'm that? starting to think so. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I mentioned it on other show that you know the only teams who really come and give us issues have scored early and then shit house us to death. So if we stay solid for 45 minutes, that prevents us from getting shit out per se mm. uh, and allows us to go and impose our game. So Would you, would you agree, Raggy? Or? But we did start quite strong, <laughs> yeah. Um, which kind of flies in the face of that, but we just didn't put them away. Um, it was, a, again, a scrappy goal to, to concede, but it was bad conditions as well. Um, yeah, it was. Uh, especially second half. I mean, at one the stage, I mean, it came inside. Crazy, yeah. Um, and you're thinking, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it was a bit of a. It, it's not going to be a classic game, you know. It's not going to be one that will, uh, you know, we'll watch the kind of DVD at the end of the season and go, oh, you know, and and and. But it, it, the, the most important thing were three points, and it was um, we've come. I saw a stat or something. We haven't it, we haven't come back from behind, going behind to win a game at Ellen Road for since like 2016 or something. Really? It, I'm didn't. sure it was. I've not, not seen that. I'm sure it was. Um, I'm sure someone had tweeted that um, September 2016 stats. sticks in my head. If stats, yeah, is, it stats could have been yeah, that. Is um, watching. Declan Marshall's mentioned on Facebook. Cooper didn't turn up in the second half, and that made us look decent. Agree or is that a bit? I, I don't think QPR had much to turn up at. No, no, I, don't, I, no. I don't think they have much. No, they, they had Naki Wells up top. Who's Naki Wells? He's a decent Championship striker. And then didn't they bring the human giraffe on? That is Matt Smith. They did. Yeah, that was Matt Smith. <laughs> That was late. Supposedly. That was late on it first half, wasn't it? Uh, second half, sorry. But they had a lad <laughs> up top, num their number 10, were it Issei or something like Academy product. And he got himself about a bit. That, yeah, the black easy. lad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, he, he did the b most amazing skill I have ever seen. He sort of went down and then swept his foot around with ball and stood up and ran off with it. Did he mean it, though? He were, I think he did, yeah. I, 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 did, I did something similar in that charity match of the week. I tried to do a Cruyff turn, fell over my own feet. <laughs> Luckily, it went through kids' legs or I was trying to Cruyff turn and I got up and carried on playing, but I certainly didn't mean it. But <laughs> defenders were just stood there like, 
Has that just happened? I'm yeah. impressed by him. Both him and yeah, Nakuels, I thought they were good. Really? Yeah. yeah. Nakuels is Nakuels, isn't he? Anyway, anywhere in and around 18 yard box, he'll do something for you, but that's probably all. He did well got. for their goal as well. Yeah, yeah. did he? Yeah, it was yeah, a decent no, finish. It, it took it well. Yeah, it took it, it well. Um, yeah, yeah, bit of a mistake from us. Um, it just a really good time to get the equaliser for Leeds. Yeah, uh, um, right on the death because it, it looked like we were going to go in behind. Yeah, I must admit, um, I was following Philly's Twitter feed because obviously I was working, as I mentioned, and um, that was my first thought when we scored just before half time. That that's the perfect time yeah, to score because suddenly Wally with the brolly's got to change his half-time team talk big time, on it because mm. now we're, we're we're well back into the game and you know it's even Stevens again for the second half. Yeah, and you don't know whether that's how that's affected them mentally as well. If 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 people are saying they didn't, look. but I, I, it looked like there were two levels there. It yeah. looked like mm. we were the better side, all all told to be to be perfect and yet honest. again we've had some more high praise from Don Goodman our friend over at Sky Sports who Fucking said that hell. Leeds United are the real deal I mm. quote this team are the real deal we've been on Sky that lo- that much that he's run out of um, nasty Abuse things to say he's yeah. yeah. essentially had a lead season ticket hasn't he <laughs> really exactly. um, well we're the, what nearly halfway through this is Villa the 23rd game of the season yeah, yeah. so yeah. two games off two games halfway. Yeah, yeah we've yeah, we played 21 in and, and we're second so if we're not the real deal then <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty easy comment isn't it yeah yeah it is is it time to start getting excited no not yet No, I, even I though I'm trying my best I am. Yeah, I'm, after, we'll talk about it a bit later on but away. also after seeing Leeds under 23s demolish Burnley earlier 6-3 with goals for uh, Patrick Bamford Izzy Brown and Jack Clark trying my hardest to keep a lid on the excitement yeah. that may start to ensue mm. a little bit if we get for me the next big test uh, and that's not disrespecting Bolton because they push Norwich close is Villa that's yeah. the next big test it, dependent on how we come out of Villa will depend on my mood in relation to carrying on but mm. the five point gap does make me feel a little bit warm and fuzzy inside which is a good thing would you not agree it's nice to have five yeah, point gaps and, and the best goal difference as well yeah. although Sorry, again going back to our friends at Sky Sports uh, they did say that if West Brom won last Friday they could go back <laughs> into the second place not the best at maths, are they? Not the best, no. Unless well, there's some sort of bonus points available. Sky for you, isn't it? Yeah, so. Anyway, yeah. Any outstanding performances against QPR? Uh, Shackleton did very well coming in as a makeshift. Jamie. Right, no, <laughs> no, not doing no, it. Not no. doing it. Stop. I'll fucking go. Stop. 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 <laughs> stop. 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 I can see the list of the figures dropping down. Uh, yeah, J- uh, Jamie Shackleton, again, um, I think he was the one that people were a little bit worried about. Um, we like a bit of Fox outrage nowadays, don't we? In, in, in just in the world in general now, we get outraged at the smallest of things. Um, but there's a little bit flying around just before the game on Twitter where, oh uh, well, people will see our crap. Jamie Shackleton is now as a right back, and did he? Go what a load of shit that is, though, because he came, he fucking, he came, he played against Swansea at right back, and yeah, yeah, he was yeah. one of the best players on pitch. Yeah. yeah, and he played against Bolton at right back. Yeah. Against the right big guy, I can't remember. And and he was Sammy Amiobi, Sammy Amiobi, Sammy Amiobi, Amiobi, yeah. yeah. And he had him in his pocket. Sammy Amiobi won't be playing against us though. He got sent off, didn't he? Yeah, he, he did. Sent, yeah. It yeah. was a bit of a shit, shit book, uh, shit second booking line. But anyway, by the by. So uh, QPR, um, I think I'll put it in the box of um, grounded out a decent result. Yeah, yeah. Would, you, would we go with that? Do you think? Um, yeah, it defines that game. I think. Yeah. And and again, I think um, it shouldn't have been, but it was. But, yeah. But again, it's that thing in it, uh, the championship. It's like if you try and back an accumulator on a Saturday. You look at them and you go, that's a shoe in And it very rarely is. Not, not, oh, yeah, so not in the there's, championship. There's no easy games in this championship. No, there whatsoever. isn't. I mean, no. we're, talking, we're talking Bolton coming up. Um, Norwich struggled against Bolton that weekend, from what I've seen, um, to, to come away with that way a positive result. So. Well, they were two, well, Norwich were 2-0 up, weren't they? And then yeah. Bol- Bolton have pegged them back. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they, and then they, they nicked the, one in the last 90, fucking minute. That team on Pookie kid, weren't it? Again, yeah, he's done, again. done quite well for them this year. That lad. Oh, he scored a load. Yeah, he scored a boatload. He's got thirteen already this year. Yeah, moving uh, moving on before we go, um, we have got a little bit of uh, celebration to be had from the game. We got one of them kicks in in that eighteen yard box thing that you're allowed to have a free go. What's it called again? I can't remember. You just you get one, free shot ball. We get one player. <laughs> <laughs> a, a PK restart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get one player who's allowed to just have a kick at keeper. I think. I think game is not to kick it at the keeper. Well, we though. we it taken so long for us to get one that we thought you had two players do that because there is Hernandez and Roof. Yeah, arguing both having out, a go. Uh, both yeah. having a go. There. Yeah, yeah. After arguing. watching, well, it was after, but um, when on the um, Copa Libertadores oh, on Sunday that? night. Yeah. There were a foul in the box, and they gave an indirect free kick. 
I'm surprised we didn't get one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a good point. It anyway. was a foul, not obstruction. Uh, but the point I'm trying to get to... I, I don't know what it was, but I was expecting a penalty and he got an <laughs> indirect free kick and I was sat there like, ah, oh, fuck it, it's Argentina. <laughs> I'm not going to argue. Let them do what they want. Probably scared of some grenade getting thrown up. <laughs> yeah, <or> exactly. <laughs> um, Peter Banks. Former... Peter Wanks. For, yeah, but former, you know, shit house of the week winner. Give us a penalty when, in realistic terms, from what I've seen... It probably weren't a penalty. <laughs> no, but it was still <laughs> shit. Yeah, it, I, it was. A, it was a difficult ang- where I was. It was a difficult angle to see it. Obviously, I've appealed. He was right in front of me, and it was difficult to see um, it. There's one angle from from the uh, highlights, so you can't really see yeah, it. Yeah, it's hard um, to see. Everyone's appealed for it. it. I've never expected us to get anything as soft as that, um, but we did. I yeah. think you have We've, to agree with um, Wally with the Broly for this one. He's come out and said, um, I don't know how he's seen it because he had to see through, through the player people. to yeah, see yeah, the handball, yeah. and he's spot on. Yeah, yeah, he is. Because I don't know how that Well, I might be funny, it. but we're just, we've indicated. We don't do shit out that we call out for just willy nilly. Mm. We give it to people who deserve it. Just this time, it's gone in our favour. Yeah. yeah. So, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Banks, you can't be a double winner right at the moment because we've got bigger fish to fry. But <laughs> the point is, we're going to get back to a great tweet from Pontus uh, with their centre half who gave away the penalty, Mr. Leishner. Listener, Tony Lishner. Is that the one? Um, With a surname like that, you don't have a surname like Tony, are you? <laughs> do, you do you know what I found funny about that tweet? The hashtag ba- TL37. Yeah. Why? That's Why? Sad, that. <laughs> oh my oh. god. TL37. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a bus. <laughs> no, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Bit nonsense, isn't it? <laughs> Terry Luango. I'm just trying to think of really crap first names for really extravagant second names now. But anyway, so um, a great, a great little tweet he put out where he was having a bit of a cry. Uh, I think I gave him some stick and said, dry and big boy, you should keep your arms down or something. And then Pontus said, oh, if you're a Leeds player, you'd be in prison now uh, for, <laughs> for putting that tweet out. So. There was also a tweet, um, sort of interaction, was it Pontus and Klitsch? Klitsch, yeah, yeah. And um, Pontus asked where Klitsch were in the game, <laughs> which is a very good point yeah. because first half he was nowhere. <laughs> it's good though that they're having that little bit yeah. of interactive banter. Anyway, uh, so we'll, we'll not QPR on Ed then. Uh, so we got one of them free kick things in 18 yard box where one person's allowed to do and um, Kemar Roof took it a plum. I'd also like to say we've smashed our curse to bits because we actually talked about penalty takers last week. Yeah. So we're not having Michael Norbinton's claim that the square ball have cured the curse. We've cured the curse. Yeah. We're having that. Cure. We've cured the curse. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's take that one. Yeah. Uh, just nipping over yeah. to Facebook then if you want to get involved uh, particularly in the next segment I'm sure there'll be some comments to be had. Um, a bit about Kieran Westwood we'll talk about that a little bit later on. A bit about Bamford we'll talk about that a bit later on. Um I found another bit earlier that I just can't find again. Oh, is that a penguin in the corner? I think that's referencing you, Ben. Uh, Which means Ben. And how cold is it in the studio? Right, I'll tell you how cold it is in the studio. Uh, It says it's quite warm here, but that's not not, not what my nipples are telling me. (laughs) That's not what my nipples are telling me. Anyway, so uh, moving on then. Um, There's been a little bit of... um, A little bit. There's been a lot of... uh, (laughs) A lot of anger uh, towards some comments made by Ian Abrahams of TalkSport. So for those who've not heard it, uh, we've actually got a clip of it here, so we'll play this and then we'll we'll get into it after. Now, I have to say that it's great to see Norwich back towards the top of the championship, or on top of the championship, and looking to get back in the Premier League. But my argument today is that it will be bad for English football if Norwich get promoted, and indeed Leeds, but certainly Norwich get promoted. Not All right, and let me come on, let- Moose. Let's, uh, let's hear you. Come on. Right. Daniel Fard was brought in, I believe, at Norwich to try and copy what was done at Huddersfield, where, of course, David Wagner came in and got them promoted. And he came into English football largely because Jurgen Klopp came in at Liverpool and was seen as being a shining light, i.e. German coaches are the way forward. Mm. Well, lining up behind Daniel Farker's Norwich and, and obviously Bielsa and Leeds are Chris Wilder, English coach at Sheffield United, Darren Moore, English Mega coach money. at West Brom, Frank Lampard, English Mega money. coach at Derby. Dean Smith, English coach Mega at money at Villa. Um, Aston Villa. And also Tony Pulis, an English coach. Uh, he's English actually Welsh. Welsh. And the only way we're going to get more English coaches into the Premier League, we only have four right now. Five. Eddie Howe, Sean Idiot. Dyche, Roy Hodgson, and uh, obviously we have um, our friend Neil Warren. What about Chris Hewitt? We only too. have four. The only way we're going to get English coaches into the Premier League. Anyway, I've had enough of listening to his droning on voice. So... Uh, basically, what he's getting at is that because there's no English managers in the Premier League, if us and Norwich were to get promoted with both Marcello Bielsa and uh, Daniel Farquad of Shrek, 
uh, getting promoted to the Premier League, <laughs> that would take up two he, positions. His that, voice fits into the Shrek he, film as that well. He, believes, he has got a weird uh, voice. That he believes that they should. Does he sound um, like one of the pigs? It's, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's very does, yeah. Wagner-esque. <laughs> You like that, it's, I'm, it's I'm not doing my Wagner impression. No. We'll we'll find a we'll find a clip. But back to the original point. Um, so he's basically saying that by them two taking up um, two spots in the Premier League that should be open to English managers. So I'm gonna oh, uh, yeah English or Welsh because he forgot Pulis were actually Welsh. The, well, well, if we're being technical, technical, we're British. We're British. If yeah. we're being technical, Darren Moore's Jamaican. All right, okay. Well, let's not get bogged down in that. But anyway, so over to you, Ben. First, what's your opinion on this? Keep it clean. This <laughs> this just. Obscene. Right, okay, it's a good start. It's obscene, obscene that is. A good <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't understand what his point is. I mean, th- right, so there's no British managers in the, well, five British managers in the Premier League. If there was, the British managers that are there have earned the right to be there. Mm. Eddie Howe's done amazing things at Bolton. Yeah. Dyche. Bolton. 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 Bournemouth. Bournemouth. He had to go at Burnley as well, all the bees. Well, Oh, that's it. With with Eddie Howe, would that work anywhere else? It's not worked at Burnley. I think he fits at Bournemouth well with how the club is, what's the size of the club, and his relationship to that club. It works well. Mm. So there's, you can't sort of say you can't pick a sort of English manager and put him in a team and say you're going to be good because it just don't work like that, does it? No. It's like we had Heckingbottom last year. Heckingbottom had six months. To prove himself that he was a good coach, what did we get? Fuck all. Okay. Nothing. Uh, like, absolutely we'll, nothing. We'll let, no. We'll, we'll let we'll let Ben simmer a bit <laughs> because I feel that it's like a good wine. If we let, let him mature a bit, let, he'll, let me he'll just finish on licking bottom. If then. he'd have taken something out of the, that last however many games he had and he'd said got and, and got the point where you can say we can't sack him because he's done well because Bielsa's come in with the same players and look at us now. There, there was a comment on, by one of our guests talking about the sacking of Eckenbottom <clears throat> and said they thought that he could, he'd could he come in and the club had changed direction from going from a continental approach to a young British coach bringing in um, bringing through like the academy players bringing through the British and giving you for chance and letting him and he didn't get enough time to do that Marcelo Bielsa has done more for our academy players in the first he's team he's done more for the whole in, club in, in the 21, ga- 21 league games that He's done than Heckingbottom did in the games that he he got. How many did he get? Sixteen, 16 games or, about that or whatever. He two, just two wins in sixteen. What is? Yeah, what? Two wins in two 16. wins in sixteen. I thought it was four. I thought it was four. Bad irrelevance. Yeah. He threw eleven players on one Saturday. Eleven play a, a different set of players the next next it week. Like Sunday league, just he go, go play, play football for two hours, lads. Exactly. It just. He, he had no. He had no idea. And the thing is, the the prospect of what Heckingbottom potentially was going to bring in. Oliver McBurney, fair dues, he's had a decent season at Swansea. And a year Dom. We haven't done anything at Reading. No. So if we if we use them two names, would them two have come in and revolutionised this side? No. No. Bielsa's has come in and brought Barry Douglas in mm-hmm. and revolutionised this side. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I know I mentioned it earlier and coming back to like the point. There's a there's a bigger argument to be had here. And my bigger argument is this. We're suffering with a lack of English coaches due to the FA's incompetence back in the 90s. Mm-hmm. They tried to copy the Dutch sort of football DNA, if you like. It mm-hmm. didn't work. So then we tried to copy the Germans. That didn't work either. Then we had to go copy in the Spanish. That didn't work either. So due to that reason, the coaches that were coming through at that time were sort of either having to pave their own way or were getting drowned out with everything else that's going on. Mm. P- pair that with the massive influx of millions and billions into the Premier League, generally brought in by foreign owners who are then going to look around and go, right, who's been the most successful? Right, at this time it was a Dutch manager, at this time it was a German manager, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then they need that instant success because they need to keep bankrolling. They, they ultimately want the money back out. It's not an endless bottomless pit. But my other point as well is with the managers that we've got, you also have this you have also this issue of this slush fund in the Premier League. We saw it with David Moyes, uh, sacked by, ironically, West Ham, uh, who Ian Abraham supports. And then uh, the next uh, manager to go, Southampton, instantly he's linked with it again. Are any well, of them... It. You've got a core of... English managers who just floats just, around the Premiership, yeah, yeah and picking they're just up there teams, yeah. specialists in failure. Yeah. yeah, well, they are, yeah, and that's why there's no English managers because they don't do anything. Mm. They get maybe a bit close. I mean, you can look at David Moyes; he 
did well at Everton. Rightly, I think, got the Man United job. Maybe it were a bit too big for him because it was a huge step up to follow from Alex Ferguson. Right, and I've got this other bit as well while we keep going because a few people have actually mentioned it. All these English managers, as I said over the clip of Moose then, are on big budgets. Mm. Darren Moore, he's inherited that side from being the under-23s manager. Their budget's huge. They've gone out and just basically they can have whoever they want. They're probably paying Rodriguez upwards of 40 grand a week, I would imagine, oh, even in the that. championship, yeah. if not more. Y you've got um, Wilder, fair dues. Wilder's come from non-league, but is it a club that's that's his club? Yeah. And, and he keeps so constantly saying that he's it, over, he's, you know, they're, yeah. they're punching above the weight That's a very bit. similar to the Bournemouth and Eddie Howe situation, I yeah. think, yeah. at Sheffield. That wouldn't Wilder. happen anywhere. You get sort of links with, with certain managers who have maybe gone back to an old club or yeah, have yeah. that link with that club. And you're gonna get more like the wilder sort of Billy Sharp thing. Billy Sharp's the Sheffield United captain, is a Sheffield United fan yeah, from, yeah. from being a boy, and you're gonna get more out of it because it means more to him than than just a job. So we we'll carry on. Dean Smith left bo left Brentford after he failed to make that sort of no, failed's the wrong word. They never made that step up to being mm -hmm. contenders. They 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 only did about for half a season, then they fall away. You see, this is where Moose's argument falls down because actually Dean Smith getting the Villa job that's a big job. Yeah, yeah, that's a big job in football. Now I know they're not Premier League, but they expect to be in the Premier League. And with that budget, you'd expect to, if you were a Villa fan, you'd expect them to be knocking on the door. You know, uh, Yannick Balassi, he'll be on a fortune. Abrams, he'll be on a fortune. You know, we're not talking, and and they'll strengthen again in January. Mm -hmm. And and there is a lot of much smaller clubs than Aston Villa who are currently occupying the bottom half of that Premier League. And realistically, you know, it should be over to they should be up there. And they've actually given an English coach a chance yeah. mm. there so that's you can't just say all the big jobs are the Premier League jobs because they're actually not there's some big football clubs in this league and how is um, English football uh, scored upon so what what is what is the level of how you say English football suddenly a success it's England winning a World Cup it's an English team winning the Champions League would, yeah. we, would we disagree yeah massively yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. England winning the World Cup is only going to happen with academy products and English players being developed and playing Marcello Bielsa mm -hmm. has brought through uh, Will Uffer granted Peacock Farrell's a Northern Ireland international but he's, you know, he's, he's another British player who we bought he's in. put his faith in him got <laughs> Calvin Phillips potentially knocking on an England call up but, you know, whether you agree or you don't agree, it's getting mentioned in the right sort of circles as, as that. Yeah. You know, is uh, started playing is, Jamie Shack in, instead of Jamie. bringing an emergency uh, goalkeeper in, he played an under twenty international in Will Huffer, another England product. So how Moose can turn around and say that it's affecting English football is mm. short sighted and beyond me in any way, shape, or form. I can't comment on Norwich because I don't care. They've got a pink dressing room, and I don't really <laughs> like Delia if I'm massively honest. But. Back I think I think he's picking up on the stat that they didn't have an English score or a British scorer until fairly recently. So what? Don't, but but it, I mean that that's by the by. A lot of people were responding to him saying that they've actually played quite a few of their academy players this season yeah, as well. Yeah. Well, they have. Yeah. Norwich have had a really good academy, but most of them I think have been sold. Now you've got the two Murphys. I think they're both. Yeah, they've, they've both left. One Cardiff, one Newcastle. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's been some other players that I think they've sold that have been come through their academy. So that's another thing that they're bringing through good young English players. That have then been sold on anyway. I'll, I'll be honest. Let's look at the the wider thing. I personally think Talksport have got a dislike for Leeds. Minus Jim White, he appears to like Mr. Adrizani. Uh, we saw Alan Brazil slating uh, Tyler Denton via his social media when he played for Leeds against Luton, uh, and, and you know, just comments completely out of place. Really, just random comments from no slagging a young mm. lad off, saying he'll never make it, and all this sort of carry on. And then we get this utter nonsense that comes out. You know, it, it's sort of drivel. Right. Uh, it's it's like I think Phil A mentioned it. I'm not going to try and claim I'm stealing it, but it's it's a throwaway comment. There's no substance to his no. argument in terms of it's damaging English football. Okay, then. So well, what makes all their money at Talksport is the Premier League. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. where is he banging on the door when they bring Pep Guardiola in? When West Ham appoint Pellegrini? Yeah. When all club. these it, all his club? It's flawed. It's just it's just clickbait shit. That's all it is. Well, that's the thing. Leeds have got a massive fan base, and they want the outrage, don't they? They want. And, yeah, of course and they do. Got, and they've got it, but, but it's a genuine debate to be had. Yeah. Well, there's a debate there as well that the national media are like that as well. Mm -hmm. For me, the the very like do the Stan Collymore thing a few months ago. It was hammering. Local journalists. The local journalists are the ones that have given the fans the sort of news and everything that they want to hear about their club. Yeah. And then when it's something big that happens and Sky want to get involved and BBC and The Sun and all that, all other shithouse newspapers, 
And they're, they're all like, oh, look at us, big national paper. But they don't fucking tell you the right story. How many times? <clears throat> Deadline day, any of these big occasions they talk about. Sky Sports are just as bad. How many times do you hear, and we'll go to the North East, and there's absolutely zero mention of anything below the Premier League. Mm. They'll have yeah. some dude getting a dildo put in his ear before they talk about <laughs> who, who a championship side are going to sign. Yeah. It's a load they of shit. They don't have um, Ian Moore going back to Hartlepool, do they? No, exactly. <laughs> they don't have that top of... You know, but the point I'm trying to make is... To turn around and say that he's desperate, you know, he, he thinks it's damaging English football. As an organisation, Talksport are damaging English football. Yeah. yeah. Because they're, they're the, the ones that are damaging prom- English promoting, football. promoting foreign managers to be this greatest spectacle in the world ever at the detriment of English football, if we're going by his argument, hmm. which is an absolute load of twaddle. Uh, I did tweet him earlier to give him the right of response, and had he had the decency to come back and phone us up, we could have had this discussion with him. Well, maybe in a couple of weeks. But, but yeah. needless to say, his clickbait article worked because it's riled some people up. And I think Phil A came out and put it a lot more eloquently than I have and shot his stupid argument out of the water. Yeah. Completely. You just look at English football as a whole, we were talking about this the other day, over the last 20, 25 years, and how many English or British coaches have actually affected the game? And we said this reluctantly, Fergie being one of them. I did say it reluctantly. You, you, well, you, no, but... No, if you, I, if, you res- if, but if you respect football, you have to so respect you, that... Ferguson has been the best English manager for the last 25 years so you've got British. British you've got Fergie and then Bobby Robson who took a bad yeah. average Newcastle side up to third in Premier League and then he's kind of responsible for Jose Mourinho in some ways really well and this, he was good at Barca good at Ipswich absolutely so then now you they think about it and you look at all these kind of inspiration in the Premier League now you look at Sarri you look at Klopp you look at Guardiola and no wonder that British the, the closest you get to that is Eddie Howe. Yeah, but not on the same, not no way on the same level as these no. big clubs, you know. And when when England are looking at this new DNA grassroots system that they're trying to bring in, are they going to look at the ideas of Big Sam Longball, or are they going to look at this eloquent, you know, passive football that's effective? Like mm. I think it was Mickey P. Kerr who said it that on Twitter that English football fans have been crying out for an effective but beautiful, you know, style of football, and this is what we kind of finally seen in the national team that which Gareth Southgate's building, but. That's all based on the influences of these top managers that have come yeah. into England and put their ideas onto a football pitch. Yeah. Completely agree. And to no disrespect to Gareth Southgate, but before this stint at the, as an England manager, he wouldn't have got a top four job. No. No. He, no. Wouldn't, he wouldn't have got any of those jobs he that were, were coming he, up. He were, a youth, he, he were a youth manager, weren't he, in yeah. England? I think so, so, that, that so, kind of fell as a happy accident. Just, and, he, and that's not nothing against the job he's done because he's done absolutely oh, yeah. wonderfully well. Yeah. But that's because he's, you know, he's intelligent enough to, like you say, put all these things together. We're playing a continental style as as England now. Yeah. yeah. Just to, just to wrap this up because we, I think we could go around in circles all night. But uh, going going back to Moose's uh, Moose's argument, I didn't also see him arguing when Wenger decided to finally move on. Where were he screaming for? Sean Dyche, uh, Eddie Howe, um, Chris Hutton. All these managers he's mentioned, where were he shouting for them to get the Arsenal job? No. No, I guarantee... I think Chris Wilder should have got the Arsenal job. Well, yeah, Paul Eckenbottom's out of a job. He could have gone in there and done a great job for him. And and then you look at West Ham, were he calling out for their managers to come West Ham manager when Moyes got sacked? No. Um, The point, Pellegrini was a tactician at Real Madrid, Premier League winner at Man City, albeit he's not done much since, but I'm sure he was pretty happy with the appointment that he's got a Premier League winner in recent years as a manager of his football club. So like you said, irrelevant. Yeah, so I think we can all agree... It's just a clickbait article that's trying to get a rise. Yeah, he sums it up there. He, Pellegrini's a Premier League winner. The last English Premier League winner was Howard, Howard Wilkinson. Wilkinson. Yeah. Yeah. 20, Six years 26 ago. years ago. So that says straight away, English managers aren't good enough. Because of They're not. the culture of English football. And we're being shown by foreigners how to play better football. And we've seen it here this year that... And, and we've discussed about it. The, the question we keep asking: Would you rather watch Bielsa and and not go up, or Pulis and go up? Yeah, and I'm, I'm Bielsa and I'm being entertained all day long. I think Rick, uh, uh, friend of Mickey, I think on uh, Facebook, anything that happens in England can only benefit England in football terms. If we've got the best players, etc., and the best managers managing it, it can only be good for the sport in England. Absolutely. I completely agree. Massively. Moose, you had your opportunity to come on and give us it, so and you could have received this Shit at the same time. Of the week. <laughs> so you have absolutely unanimously, despite the Twitter poll that we put out, won 
shit house of the week. Congratulations. You shit house. And we got to get promoted house. just to rub it in your <laughs> face. Yeah. yeah. And, and when it comes to Leeds, first game of the season next year when we're in Premier League, I hope James Mooney stands at dawn and goes, fuck off. <laughs> 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 you're not allowed in here. <laughs> James, if you're listening, sorry, because we know you are. <laughs> if you could make that happen, that'd be great. <laughs> anyway, uh, moving on ever so slightly, being uh, we're coming towards silly season that is January, where we start getting linked with players, uh, and some of the most spurious links start appearing as well. Uh, Abdel Tarapt is the latest one. I f- somehow cannot see Abdel Tarapt fitting into Marcelo Bielsa's thing, way of doing things. <laughs> he's not been playing at Benfica though. He's not been playing. Yeah, but it, yeah. I don't, the thing is, I don't think it's that. I think he's a complete wrong and they've had no but problems with him in every English club he's ever been yeah. in and I just don't think it fits uh, in Neil Warnock got a lot out of him yeah, I but, well, yeah but I don't think we'll not yeah. I don't think uh, Neil Warnock would have made him Tarabit. train <laughs> yeah he's good at, good at mispronouncing Neil when, well, when I saw he? Adele Tarrapt like, being linked all I could think of with Neil Warnock going Tarabat I'll play Tarabat and he'll just run around that's what he'll say Tarabat Tarabat Tarabit. sounds like a frog oh dear Raggy, I think you might be in for a rollicking when you get home. Why? I'll let you read that comment off your wife. <laughs> your three-year-old has just been listening before bed and said, shit house. Nice one. <laughs> Amelia, you're not allowed to use that word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Brilliant. Anyway, so the latest names to be linked is uh, Kieran Westwood. Is that Raggy up for shit house at week next <laughs> yeah, week? Yeah, he's won it. Um, so, uh, latest name, Kieran Westwood, uh, Sheffield mm. Wednesday goalkeeper, not played since 2017 for Sheffield Wednesday due to, I believe, contract wranglings. Um, thoughts on that one, boys? Experienced um, keeper? Uh, experienced, talented. Um, Irish. The fact that he's not played, uh, I don't know. And, yeah, if there's question marks about attitude, if it's all about contracts, I don't know. Uh, mm. That side of it. We we need a keeper. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be brought in to be number one though. Is he? He's going to be brought in to be a. Because we have the BPF, <laughs> a mentor to Bailey Peacock do, Farrell. Do, do. Sorry, <coughs> Bailey Peacock Farrell. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he's going to be brought in to be a mentor and there if we need him. But if he's leaving Sheffield Wednesday because he can't play uh, over contract wranglings, is he going to really want to come here and then be told, right, you're going to sit behind this 21 mm. year old and it's up to you to displace him? But that's where, yeah, that's where it's hard, isn't mm. it? Because w- what do we go for? Because if we want the experience and the mentoring, I mean, how experienced can you get? I mean, how old is uh, it? 34. Uh, I had a look this morning. 34. I mean, I mean, it's you, you would still expect to get, I mean, I don't know what he's like. You know, in in terms of physical condition, but you'd ex- still expect to be getting a f- good few years out of your career. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. But well, Friedel um, was still forty, weren't he? Friedel playing at forty, yeah. I think. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, as, well, as yeah. a yardstick there. Um, so it's a difficult one, but you don't. You also don't want to necessarily go down the the route that we went beginning of the season and get a you know a, a younger keeper in. Mm. Um, so how are we going to do it? I another name linked is Carl Darlow from yeah. Newcastle. Now. Um, he's someone who could probably go in as number one yes mm. and uh, you could and that's see what, for me that's where it'll have to be either someone who's going to go in as number one or not bother uh, but the thing is as well for me it's one of them where we have to look on a bit you know Cal Darlow if he, if he was to come in um, could do a job in this league did a job for Newcastle in the Premier League so yeah. you can see a bit of natural mm. and you can also see him and Peacock Farrell fighting you know mm. challenging each other and pushing each other on yeah. a little bit whereas Westwood comes in at 34 he's going to want to play week in week out and if we do get to the promised land which we might. Is he good enough to step, make that step up to the Premier League? I don't know. He's never played there. I'm not sure. He's 34. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. It's, it's you know, we're open. We're open to your ideas, really, on uh, on Facebook. If you wanna, if you wanna um, give us your opinion I on it. Did see a splurious link to a young lad um, in Portugal called Leo, young goalkeeper from. I can't remember. What, I can't remember what they call actually. Rio Ave. Rio Ave. Yeah, Rio Ave. Right. Yeah. But he's bueno. <laughs> he's on loan at he's on loan at Gremio until the end of the season, so I'm not sure. Right, might be um, I don't know. Might be an under twenty three. I'm not sure. I mean, who is a te- who is technically our third keeper if we bring a second keeper? This Harrison Camille Maziak. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a few youngsters there, so you won't imagine mm. they'd bring him in unless they don't think they're going to make it. I don't know. Um, Adam Wiseman, Tom Eaton. No. I personally think Tom Eaton will go somewhere. Took a paste in where, today. Where Didn't he Burnley Joe? Where he'll play. Didn't he Burnley Joe? <laughs> where he'll play for big money. <laughs> Uh, is, is my honest opinion he'll be on big wages at Burnley England International and he would for me want to go somewhere where they'll pay his wages he's probably. got Villa written all over him yeah I think he has to be honest yeah. I think he'll go to Villa in January mm. yeah I, th- I think that's the that's the link in it and their, their goalkeeper does look quite soft 
yeah, very soft, yeah, from what you guys were saying earlier. Not good. Uh, over on Facebook, Steve Millard. Uh, Gaz, who would your number one English player sign in in January? Who would make a big difference at Leeds? Uh, Harry Kane. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah it's there. Um, I, I don't uh, know. James Milner. James Milner, yeah. yeah. Um, James, 500 games. Well done, James. Salah gave him the when I had the match. Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. He did. So, yeah, they're the, two, they're the two names amongst Adel Tarat. Jermaine Lenz uh, and a few other spurious links that we've that, heard. Um, Spanish lad did some at other day, didn't he? Kick ups. Did some kick ups on pitch. Yeah. Oh, well done. Saw that. Uh, the more and more I look into that, more and more I can't see that one happening. I think that'd be a bit of money getting splashed around there. And I'm yeah. not yeah. sure Leeds will. Not sure Leeds will spend big in January if at all. If no. Nah. That's so, my honest feeling. Just every time we need to someone to come in, we just the youth are coming in and they're stepping up. Yeah. Yeah. We don't. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, you're right. Uh, it just appears at the moment. I mean, Apple Alm, I've been mega impressed with him. I mean, he looks like he looks like a mass murderer behind his eyes. There's not much there. He's a bit like Pablo He Nando. controlled the ball. Yeah. And uh, he came on and he had Matt Smith in front of him. I don't know how he did it, but ball were like... Uh, that's Jedi mind trick, that. Yeah, well, he just sort of attached to his foot from, like, mid-air. Looks like Kylo Ren off uh, Star Wars. Yeah, it does. For those that are interested. <laughs> it does, actually. My, I think it looks like, like, like some, it for the, some comedian. Magic. Who? Someone had put that on Twitter and I thought that was a bad I think it might come on and put it on that show. Yeah, Joe Lysert. He's yeah. a spitting image of him. Anyway, so um, now we've done talk, <laughs> talking about what our young players look like. No, but I mean, again, they brought on Matt Smith. Obviously, we're, we're two and up at that stage and you think, oh, they're going to start lumping it long and, and like you say... That referee helped him with that. Yeah, he yeah. He gives so many free kicks just on the halfway line because he knew that they were just going to hit it up to Matt Smith. Well, that's what he did for... Uh, for Birmingham as well yeah. when, we, when he when he refed against Birmingham, he gave every soft free kick possible but, in good areas for them. But what we you know we and Bielsa just changed it and Bielsa went well we'll just we'll mark bring, him up we'll and bring, we'll bring uh, on Hal yeah. Halm and is yeah, it Halm or Halme? Hal- a Halma? Halma? Halma probably. If you're, you're listening, Hapo, in between creating the Death Star, but give us a ring <laughs> and uh, tell us what it is. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, I minute. Mean, there's a bit of a feeling like all right, well everybody's crocked I'm not mentioning no names because the curse exists mm. uh, everybody's exists. crocked we'll just nip into under 16s and bring some, some <laughs> child in yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, you can take afternoon off and you can come in um, Steve Millard Milner's a great shout I think uh, I still think Wiltshire would be a game changer for you guys <laughs> yeah it would mate but wow his wages would be ridiculous and he's, on over. And he's injured again where's he yeah. playing now West, West Ham, Ham. There was I- one ironically <laughs> Clark Bailey any thoughts on Saeed's long term uh, Long term future in the team with his re- recent dip in form. I thought Sayers were a lot better on. Uh, yeah, I do. As from well. the bits I've seen and from listening to Adam Pope and Noel Whelan on BBC Radio Leeds, uh, I think he had a, one of his better games. But I think uh, interestingly, he also came out his presser after Dinny and said that yes, he had a better game, but there's still a lot more, and he wants to see a lot more from him. Yeah, I think I think Say kind of needs but it though. The midfield struggled on on Saturday for me, and uh, for sure can't play the Phillips role. Mm. No, I think what he does, he does really well. Like but it's not Phillips, is it? I don't know. It runs I thought Forshaw was good, though. I I actually thought he did a good game yeah, on Saturday. But he he didn't play the Phillips role. No, no, no. And we need that. Mm. That that's I, why I, li- I like Halmer coming into the side as centre yeah. half as alongside Janssen and and, and, and and that's why I go in. when we when we get into ball I'd, I'd go for Halmer and mm. starting. Um, I've completely lost my train of thought. It'll come back Say to, oh, going back to going back to transfers. Oh. Uh, I saw a splurious link on Sunday that uh, West Bromwich Albion may have been interested in Calvin Phillips. Oh, from uh, Mr. Alan Nixon. Yeah, Alan Nixon, uh, the ever reliable throw enough shit at the wall and some will stick. Um, I'm, I'm sure they are. I'm brilliant. sure they're very interested. Nice I'm sure. I don't, I don't most think they're going to get him. Sides, uh, you're not. You're not having him. Yes. I'm sure they can fuck off. <laughs> the thing is, as well, uh, going back to it, Calvin Phillips would potentially bring a massive fee now because there's nobody else like him. He's no longer just a no, just a central midfielder. He's a specialist. He's midfielder. a Calvin Phillips. He's a Calvin Phillips. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody else like him. Plays so. the Calvin Phillips role. So yeah, so that's another splurious link. Um, however, going back to the players uh, today, we've seen the, the under twenty threes demolish Burnley six uh, three. Uh, I think it was a bit of a two and fro game. I was following it via Twitter because I had me, were a uh, bit boring. Was it? You yeah. following watching? Well, I was sort of working at the same time, but yeah, I don't think we were great first half. And then it goes off Facebook and you have to go on an app and next thing I see goals flying in for fun. Yeah, well, just going back to this from last week. Uh, what the good thing is in injury terms is we're now seeing Patrick Bamford and Izzy Brown both get through 90 minutes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've still we've got left in casualty. Um, Luke Ayling. Ayling, but he's back and running. Dallas. Dallas, Cooper, uh, every bugger. Uh, but at least we got them two back. 
I mean, mm-hmm. I think Paddy Bamford do a decent job at right back. <laughs> <laughs> um, He's got the height. But no, uh, he can, he, the thing is, uh, joking apart, he can only start bringing more confidence. And I mean, you look at Kemar Roof now, you you know, today he'll be like, oh, Patrick Bamford got an hat trick against an England Yeah, but goalkeeper no today. one's touching Kemar Roof right now. No, 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 not at all. But it's a good thing. We saw Kemar yeah. Roof and Patrick Bamford early in the season having a bit of a chat before a game. And, you know, it looks like there's a genuinely good relationship there where they'll push each other to try and, you know, be better. And I don't think Bamford will, Bamford will know. He seems like a clever kid. He'll know full well that he ain't going to dislodge Kemar Roof. But... If he's working in the wings, you know, scoring hat tricks for the under twenty threes, he's banging on the door, isn't he? The first time Roof, you know, I'm, I don't say the words, but he has an off game or something else happens where mm. he can't run or out. Um, then you know you've got you've got Patrick Bamford there, <laughs> but you've got options. That's the thing. Yeah, and and he is a, he's a different type of player to Roof as well. And if it isn't working out, then you, you've got him to bring on. Yeah, currently. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bit of debate going on on uh, social media about uh, Alioski. Thoughts on Alioski at the weekend, guys? I obviously went there. A bit better. I mean, it lasted more than 45 minutes, so it must have been better. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, he still didn't offer it's still a bit huge amounts going forward. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I was surprised he lasted the full 90, to be honest. I'll, I'll still go back to my original point. I didn't catch the game in its entirety on Saturday. I still want more out of him in the attacking third. Mm-hmm. I don't doubt his defensive work. I don't doubt his effort. I'm, you know that not that's not in question. But for a team that's striving for promotion, we need more in the final third, and we need players like him to provide it. It's. I think I, I might have said it last week. It's like he's trying not to be offside now, and it's just affecting his game. Mm. I'd love him to do a full Kemar Roof, Liam Cooper job and come back and ram it right down our throats, mm. and you know have a second half of the season to die for. Maybe he will. Maybe won't as, as well. Just to chill. No, but you never know. Yeah, like we said does. all of us were saying in summer would sell Roof to Reading for seven million, and look at him now. Yeah, Steve. You Millard. won't sell him for seventy. Steve Millard again. Chips <laughs> out. Oliver Watkins at um, Brentford was a potential signing. The one who dived. Uh, I was say he's a yeah. good diver. Yeah, he's a decent player to be fair. Yeah. Anyway, so we best move on to. Uh, Raggish predictor and see uh, how we all managed to not get on again other than the guest on a weekend. Raggy's predictor. <laughs> um, well, all of us, including um, including the guest, um, went for a Leeds victory. No one said 2-1, so no one got full points. Um, so we all pick up just one point. So it still means Mickey Pico's guest of the week is out ahead on 30, uh, followed by... Young Ben on 21. Yeah. Myself on 20. Gaz on 19. And oh, God. Old Ben still bringing up the rear. I'm having 18. a mare. I'm having a mare at the minute. Marathon, so, not a sprint. <laughs> you keep saying that. Until end of season. <laughs> hey, we're not even halfway there yet. You keep saying that. So, um, obviously, just one uh, prediction to go for this week, which is uh, the upcoming game against Bolton at the weekend. Interesting stat they haven't won since September, Bolton. Oh God! Yeah. Probably the last time they played. <laughs> oh God! Probably the last time they played. Another one of those players as well. <laughs> Everything points to a Leeds win. Everything. Nil Bolton. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so our um, our guest this week um, is a uh, is Joe who's producing the show today. Burnley, Burnley Joe. Burnley Joe. Uh, Six three. <laughs> and he's gone three one Leeds. Um, so what say you, young Ben? Two one Leeds. Two one. Ben. 1 0 Bolton. Fuck. <laughs> Get in the bin. Okay. Get in the bin. Are you being serious? Yeah, I'm going to go with that. 1 0 well. Bolton. Okay. Gary. I really need to pull some back here. That's my thoughts. I'm going. 3 0 leads. There's got to be one at some point. We've got to dick somebody at some point. Yeah, we do. Um, Dick QPR. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, true. Um, I'm going 3-1. I, I'm doing that. Uh, 3-1 leads. That's 3-1 leads. Um, so, yeah. So, Ben uh, going against leads. That's fine. Rick Kerr, son of Mickey, has gone 4-1 leads. We're due to hammer someone. I have to agree. I think we're due to hammer someone. But I don't I stick my neck out of the line and say we're going to hammer someone. Because we, we probably won't. Yeah. We're gonna win. I'm it, just it, going against it for just um, shits and giggles. <laughs> I mean, going against it to be generally awkward. I mean, they've <laughs> gone to Norwich. They've gone two 0 down, and they've got character to bring it back. And then, but how much is that last minute 
you know, gold. Took out of them, yeah. He's the going to take it out of them. The fact that Christmas is coming up and they're going to have to visit a soup kitchen because none of them have been paid <laughs> since probably <laughs> February or something stupid. Yeah, there'll yeah. be a bit of that as well, I would imagine. And no Sammy Amiobi has been probably their better player. One of their better like, players. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Lee Cox says 4 0 Saturday. Time to smash someone. <laughs> Momentum going into Villa. So, so. That'll be massive. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Strack and James Britton. What? Yep. Bolton are a team we should be beating by a big margin, but we thought that about Reading, Ipswich, QPR. Yeah. No mm. easy games in this league. We've already mentioned it. There's every chance Ben's prediction could come true, <laughs> to be fair. Um, anyway, so that's uh, Raggy's predictor. Um, Charity Signal while we're talking about uh, Mickey P. Kerr uh, the guys from um, Fat Chance Podcast released their charity single on the 13th of this month all uh, proceeds go into um, the Forget Me Not Foundation mm-hmm. so um, I think it. if you listen to uh, Ryan Wilson's show in the morning LS11 from 7.30 uh, you, they're going to play a full um, a full run through of it a full time. rendition a full rendition in ready ready in time so uh, give that a listen but more importantly on 13 download it even if you don't like it uh, which I don't know why you won't just give uh, it a quid to charity quality. it's a quid to charity innit so yeah. it's not an MP so, so cop, cop for that if you like uh, just nip it over on Facebook then before we go uh, Dave Player a 4-0 massacre 82% possession to save our backline's legs for the Christmas stretch he's put also listening in from Dallas Texas all leads aren't we wow good effort great Dallas. stuff um Strachan James Britton has come on uh, to uh, announce his name uh, named after Gordon if you were wondering I nice. thought he were named after Michaela good effort good effort <laughs> um, Sarah McKeevy uh, ap- apologies for pronouncing your name wrong uh, a professional 1-0 Leeds win uh, Adam Coombs 5-0 Leeds um, I hope so but I don't know I'm scared <laughs> um, Mitchell Emerson uh, talk of Wes Fodringham up at Rangers coming in as a goalkeeper no. I'm led to believe that that's a lot of toffee Shit. That's not happening. You can't dis- dislodge an uh, 83 year old Alan McGregor. He ain't going to come down and make us any better for me. <laughs> um, so, no. Uh, Dilip has gone 2 1 leads again. So, a few people believing that we're going to spank somebody, and a few, a fair few people were uh, concerned about our welfare with how cold it is in here. Uh, so there's quite a few people saying how cold in there. Let's start a fundraiser to get the thermostat working. I don't think as much as it's cold, out, it's cold outside as well. Yeah, there's a song in there outside. somewhere. Not allowed to sing it. No, it's, there's folks outrage again about yeah. that. You can't because it lyrics in it. No, can't sing. Baby, it's cold outside. Uh, Ed McIntyre, three-one leads. Philip Millian, hope Bamford makes an appearance. Yeah, um, I fully expect Bamford and Izzy Brown probably finding their way on the bench um, on s- Sir Saturday. I thought we might see, uh, might have seen Bamford on um, on Saturday against whoever we just played the QPR. QPR. Them in yeah. the hoops. Um, just go a few more uh, predictions. Jake Howard, Marshall, two-one leads. Uh, Joe Wayman, Binky. No, uh, scared emoji. I've only said it for points. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> T- talking of charity, and that, uh, great efforts by raising money at the food bank on Saturday. Yeah, they, yeah. Well, uh, the equivalent of something trust. like yeah. three thousand meals. Yeah, that's good. Effort, uh, which at this time of year, obviously those who need it, that's uh, that's great effort <laughs> from all the Leeds fans. So uh, uh, Ed, well Ed, done. <laughs> there's, a, there's a bit of a dig at my head. Um, Ed McIntyre. To be fair, if you grow hair, you'll be warmer. <laughs> uh, he's got no choice in that the problem is Ed yeah, uh, I'm kind of follically challenged and I have no other choice this is kind of it uh, Adam Wiseman can take the heater with him to Monaco don't give a shit where he's took it or what he's doing as long as he's not here anymore cool <laughs> three in the leads Dave play a question for the next episode who's going to be the next player currently on the Leeds roster to get a call up to the England squad Calvin, Calvin Phillips. Phillips Jamie <laughs> Jack 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 da, da, da. Uh, and, yeah uh, yeah that's all I'm going with uh, Calvin design. Phillips I think probably before the end of the season. You think, think so? I do actually think he'll get named in a squad before the end of the season. If he stays fit. Mm-hmm. Well, I, th- I think he'd probably suit how England want to oh, play. 100%. As well, so yeah, maybe. Because I, I can't see players like Livermore and Huddleston being able to do that. <laughs> Jake Livermore in England's going to well, Yeah, exactly. Did you say Huddleston as well? Yeah. Oh dear. Well, is there any other... Defensive midfielders like that that are going to be in England squad. Well, he plays Dyer. Eric Dyer. He? Eric was Dyer. Mm. Mm. Uh, Nazgula, are you a lot presenting in igloo? All wrapped yep. up. Um, I, I'll be honest, I have warmed up now, but uh, if I start doing this, it's a little bit unprofessional, so I've just like, kind of left my coat on. But uh, it was cold when we first got in here. So, yeah, um, so the charity single going back to the. Um, Fat chance, guys. Uh, give it a listen. Give it a download. You know, 99p going to an amazing charity, so do that. Uh, Lucas Broadbent's gone for nil nil. 
Interestingly, I can't see that. Um, <laughs> it won't be interesting. If no, it's nil-nil. <laughs> no it, there'll be an absolute. There'll be a, you know some form of mutiny if it's a, if it's a nil nil. Um, <laughs> Lee Cox shit out of the week impending when we lose one nil. <laughs> to be fair, if we do, we'll just give him a one show ban <laughs> if we lose one nil. You're not allowed. All right. You? You're not allowed to play art <laughs> for a show for going against Leeds. I'm only kidding. Did you really just say uh, if he stays fit, curse? Oh god, I did, didn't I? <laughs> oh god, no. Can I take it back? Uh, how many points from the next four games will Leeds get? Let's see, it's just one. So what we got? We got Bolton, we got Villa, Hull, Bolton, Hull, 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 and then Forest, and For- then Forest. No, 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 no. Blackburn, Blackburn, Bolton, Villa, Blackburn, Hull. No. Blackburn's on Boxing Day, isn't it? I should. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. You got a box. Yeah. I am right. You are right. Oh. If Atlas is listening, I am right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are. Uh, Bolton, Villa. So I reckon. Right. Blackburn, Hull. Yeah. <laughs> 10 points. <sighs> I'm going to say 10 points. I tell you what, if we got 10 points, I'll be over the moon. I'm going 10. I'm going 10 with Ben. I think a win, a draw, and then two oh, wins. Shit, I can't help but feel we're cursing stuff again here. Mm. <laughs> Let's not ask this question. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> Rick Kerr, son of Mickey. Uh, all 12. Nah, well, can't, nah, big bollocks. The, Villa's the one that you're sort of thinking. Ed McIntyre says 11. 10, rather. I'm so under 11. What can we say? Yeah, Villa's <laughs> 11. <laughs> 11 is hard. Yeah. Uh, it might be Sky making them, uh, making them, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. them maths. Um, yeah, Villa's the sort of game that you're thinking is going to be sort of the closest. You'd, the other ones, you'd, I don't really want to say this, but you'd Shh, expect us to it. win. You've just gone one oh, nil Bolton. Sake, yeah, you? that's different. <laughs> <laughs> Declan Marshall's gone for nine points. Um, so yeah, well, I think we'll just have to lose to Villa, but win the others. Uh, Lucas Broadbent, after an easy run, the next six games are brutal. Derby, Stoke, Norwich, Borough, and Swansea. Yeah, they are brutal. Yeah, but 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 Stoke at the moment not pulling the trees up. We battered Stoke. We battered Norwich, Derby. We battered them. Borough. Land of the Giants kick it at the red, but they've dropped off a little bit. Yeah, they have. Swansea, to be fair, I thought one of the better sides we've played this year down there. But they're a um, bit hot and cold, aren't they? Hot and cold. Um, I don't fear anybody anymore. No, I, I, I wouldn't honest. say I fear anyone. I just, there's some hard, hard, harder games. We, we need to start playing better by the time we get to them mm. teams. Mm. Suddenly, them six games, win your own games, draw your away We're games. saying this, yeah, and we've just yeah. won four in the bank. Like well, yeah. I, know, I know where you're coming from, but we have won four it's in the bank. It's the pessimism bounce. in us, isn't it? it? Yeah. yeah. I mean... It's natural, isn't it? After Bolton and Villa, we've played everyone once. Mm. And be- be- if we get two results in the next two games, we've been soundly beaten once this season. I agree. West Brom. Against West Brom. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we've been on the end of two... Shithoused, Shithoused mm. uh, defeats as well. Yeah, I mean yeah. that that's that would be an unbelievable stat. Massive, massive. It yeah. would be, and like you say, at that point you don't you don't fear anyone. All you then fear about is the championship, and you, you're going to end up with some of those shithouse results cropping up again. Um, but they will happen to everyone around us as well. Mm. Mm. It just it's it's a miracle that it hasn't happened to Norwich yet. And they, they look like they've got a bit of a tough... They've got a sticky run coming up, I think. Cr- you know, Christmas is going to be crucial. It, it, for everybody, yeah. Absolutely. And we'll it will be very different when we look at it, you know, come the beginning of um, January. When we return from our so, uh, Christmas holiday. Yeah. yeah. Well, we were saying what, we'll, we'll miss five games and the whole picture could change massively in that time. Well, hopefully we're, not. We might need to stick one in the middle if the curse starts to take over, though, just to try and quell it. I yeah. Think. Anyway. Anyway, now's a daytime one. Yeah, we could do, yeah. Yeah, spend most Christmas drunk, though. Problem. Anyway, uh, Nazgul, even better. Yeah, no, we'll do dr- better. Drunk not doing drunk a drunk podcast. one. Podcast. <laughs> not doing a drunk one. Not doing a drunk one. <laughs> That'd be entertaining. Not doing, it wouldn't. <laughs> not it doing would. a drunk one. Um, Nazgul are the tough games are when we've got most of our injured players back. Keep the faith. No, I don't think the faith That's lost. I think it's a. Yeah. I think it's kind of a. We're eternally pessimistic being Leeds United fans, but no, I, I t- yeah, I completely agree. I take that point on board actually. But there's every chance some more players might not be here. That's just the way. It well, that's the thing you just it. don't know. Like we're talking about that that tough running. Well, it, like you say, all our players might be back. We might not have any more fresh injuries, and, mm. and our oppositions might all be on bad form at that, that stage. Yeah, you just don't know how it's going to work out. 
it, it, as cliched as it sounds, you just got to take it one, that one game at a time. Which yeah. is weird. So that kind of brings us to an end of episode 37. We're, um, not, we're not covering Bolton. Well, we we kind of did. We could cover oh, more. You, you, oh, sorry. Do you, have you got some uh, red hot oh, yeah, uh, prepared sorry, analysis over, over on Bolton? Yeah. Not from the very reliable who, who scored, scored. Yeah. Yeah. obviously. So, Bolton's strengths. <laughs> <laughs> they're good at aerial duels defending set pieces and protecting the lead do you know when you see aerial duels I always think like two blocks on a platform Gladiators. with a pool duel stick <laughs> yeah. Shadow you were, were the best yeah. Yeah. Shadow yeah. who's afraid <laughs> of the big bad wolf come out tormented crowd didn't he yeah. pool duel stick right here donk come for that <laughs> weaknesses Keeping possession of the ball, that suits us. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we can cope with that. Defending against attacks down the wing, that suits yeah, us. Yeah, that suits us, yeah. Defending counter-attacks, that suits us. Yep. Finishing scoring chances, that, that suits, suits everybody. Anyone, <laughs> <it>. <laughs> Avoiding fouling in dangerous areas. I like Leeds' Penalty. I like Leeds's weaknesses. Aerial duels, a bit more gladiators. <laughs> Defending Look, against We were good at players. aerial duels earlier Last this week. Season. Last yeah. week, <laughs> um, very weak at avoiding <laughs> offside. Depends who's playing left midfield. Uh, yeah. Stopping opponents from creating chances. Weak, second best defense in the league, other than Borough. Mm. That's why I said it's very reliable. I demand a recount. Uh, Uscored. dot com. Uh, match forecast: Leeds will stray offside. Uh, Leeds will dominate possession. Standard. Bolton will dominate the air. Put like, put like a no-fly zone over my one. <laughs> a fighter jet's covering it. Uh, yeah. like, <laughs> Scrabble the jets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, can I do a fly past on the tower, please? No, you can't. Midway through game. Leeds will steal the ball from the opposition often, and Bolton will be shown a high number of cards. What, like, more, more than one? <laughs> more than one. Yeah, cheers for that. Uh, so, that's our um, sort of preview of Bolton. You said, <laughs> you said Naz's name wrong three times. How about, what is it? Sorry. Oh, Gulzar. Sorry. I can't read very well. Goals are. Sorry, Nas. Goals are. Just call you Nas from now on. I apologise. Uh, so after that in-depth analysis, are you still going 1-0 bottom? No, we're going to win. All right, but your prediction's still But if your prediction comes through, then laughing at her. Well, you, you'd... Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Laughing-ish. Laugh when I've got three points. <laughs> Ish, laughing. I anyway, I won't be laughing. After that... Brilliant analysis of Bolton, uh, or preview of Bolton. That brings us to the end of episode 37. However, uh, if you're going to miss us over the Christmas period, you can still feel like you're close to Talking Shut by purchasing a Talking Shut t shirt. Uh, if you go to propersport.shop, there's loads of different um, merchandise, merchandise on there, to be honest. Uh, some there's mugs and some t shirts. Marcelo with a, Marcelo Santa with a hat Christmas on. hat on. So if, you, if you're desperate for some form of Christmas t shirt or jumper for your works, do get yourself one of them. That'd be ideal. Be also on his bucket. Um, so yeah, nip over there and uh, have a look what's going on there. There's some uh, six late debate stuff. So um, I think there might even be some fat chance stuff on there now as well. So, so there's a fair bit going. So get over there and uh, and have a look. But that does bring us to the end. Obviously, we were meant to have David Norris on tonight, but uh, very selfishly signed for another club between the last show and this show, and they're uh, playing away tonight. I believe uh, he's signed for Lancaster Town. Oh, he's not in Champions League. Uh, no, oh, oh, right. playing for Lancaster oh. Town. So uh, good luck to him up there. And, and next week we did have the uh, under the cosh guys, but again they can't do it anymore now. I think they're on the Christmas do so. Um, if we manage to get somebody snared by next week, we'll have somebody on. If not, then we won't. I it might be, be might not. What, why? Where just are you going? Fearful just, of death. Or no, what? It's just mine. Have you got another pantomime? Not pantomime. Nativity no. play. No. How was that, by the way? Yeah, I played back end of a donkey. <laughs> no. We're told you didn't have face foot front end, so back end. <laughs> <laughs> is it hard to coordinate front end at back end? It is, actually. Is yeah. it? Mm. I would imagine it would be. Don't like talking about it, really. Yeah. Like I said, don't have face foot front end at Donkey. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that brings us to the end of that. <laughs> <laughs> but no, thanks to everybody who's listened. And uh, again, like I said last week, everybody who. Um, as a chat with us because Facebook's been alive with much debate today over the um, Ian Abraham Facebook's stuff Facebook's been good today yeah that. it has actually um, Twitter it's always nice to hear from you so uh, and uh, my favourite is YouTube because uh, people always put uh, great show or sometimes they put shit but um, they put <laughs> where they're listening that's just me that's just Ben isn't it? <laughs> uh, and, and we do literally get them everywhere um, so if you do messages just tell us where you're listening because int- I'd like to make, knock up a world heat map of where people listen to Talking Show from that'd be ideal Um <laughs> Sean Metcalf, Lancaster City are not very good, he says. So that's enough for that. Anyway, uh, so again, thanks very much for listening. Make sure you share, like, review, whatever else you don't want to do that Ben normally tells me what it is. Anyway. Share, so. like, review, retweet, whatever. He played Jingle Bells on way out as well. Yeah. Hold on, we find it. Uh, we'll go for that. We'll go for that. 
Nee, he's put the one up as well. Oh, that one here. Yeah. Say there. Say there. Say there.